Okay, let's move on to Newton's Laws, section 1.4. These are the questions that can guide our learning in this video. First of all, after this video, see if you can describe Newton's three laws. Speak it, write it, internalize it. Number two, which of these three laws is a consequence of one of the other laws? So there's three laws. Which of the three laws is a consequence of the other law? Number three, um, this is based on the third law, which we'll obviously get into. But if forces act in pairs that are equal, opposite, and collinear, remember if we'll get to this, but if you've got two bodies and they interact, then these two, the force that this body exerts on that body is equal and opposite and collinear to the force that this body acts, uh, applies to this body. They are equal in magnitude opposite in direction and along the same line. Okay, so if that's the case, you can see that they would they would uh, cancel each other out, it looks like, right? They're cancelling each other out. But then how is it that bodies accelerate if if this is the case? How is how is it that bodies even move? How do they accelerate if these forces just cancel each other out? Okay, so these are the questions. So let's go through um, the laws. Law 1, a particle remains at rest or continues to move with uniform velocity. What does uniform mean? It means it goes with a constant speed in a straight line. At rest or constant speed in a straight line if there's no unbalanced force. Unbalanced force acting on it. Okay, so... If you've got an object here, and you've got a force in that direction of whatever, 10 Newton, and a force in the opposite direction of 10 Newton, then you have a balanced force. The vector sum, F, will simply be, the magnitude of F will simply be zero, because acting on this body is 10 minus 10. So there is a balanced force, and in this case, it will be at rest or at constant speed. And so just remember, uh, just because an object is moving doesn't mean that there is a an unbalanced force acting on that object. And if an object is moving with a constant speed, it means that there are balanced forces. Okay? So if there's unbalanced, it's accelerating. So let's move to 2, law 2. The acceleration, the acceleration of a particle is proportional to the vector sum of forces. So this is this well-known uh, F equals MA. So the acceleration is proportional to the vector sum of all the forces acting on it and is in the same direction as this vector sum. Vector sum, remember, if you've got some object and you've got a number of forces acting, F1, F2, F3, right? You need to add up all those forces. F is F1 plus F2 plus F3, for example. And <clears throat> this is the vector sum of those forces. And the acceleration is proportional to this vector sum. Um, now, now what you need to take note of is this law 2 over here is not saying that there is always an acceleration. It is saying that the acceleration is proportional to this vector sum of forces. So it's possible that this sum of forces gives us zero. Does that make sense? It's possible that all these forces just sum up to zero. And so then, the acceleration is proportional to the vector sum. If this is zero, then we have m a, and so acceleration would then be, would then be zero. But if it's non-zero, then again, it's proportional to that. And this proportionality constant 
let's just call it that, is the mass, the inertia of the object. Acceleration is F over M. If F is zero, the vector sum is zero, then your acceleration is zero. Okay, number three. The forces of action and reaction between interacting bodies are equal in magnitude. Okay, I, I just did this. Two, two bodies that are interacting. F, let's call this A and B. And this, this force is called FA onto B. And that force is called FB onto A, right? So these forces of action and reaction between interacting bodies are equal in magnitude. Their magnitudes are equal, so FBA equals FAB. Notice I've, I don't have the bar on top or below, or the arrow. And so this refers to the magnitudes. It's opposite in direction. Any two interaction objects uh, apply forces on each other that are opposite in direction. And they're collinear. They lie on the same line. Okay. So that's law three. And so this is Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Okay. Um, so... So Newton's first law, this is important for statics, Newton's first law contains the principle of the equilibrium of forces, which is the main topic of concern in statics. Equilibrium of forces. Equilibrium of forces is the, is the main topic in statics. Statics, right? Acceleration is zero. Now listen. The first law is a consequence of the second law since there is no acceleration when the force is zero right that's what i was explaining earlier so if the vector sum is zero your acceleration is zero and you have the first law that means that the vector sum is balanced meaning the sum of all the forces is equal to zero which means that it's at rest or moving with uniform velocity it adds nothing new to the description of motion. That is interesting. So the first law is actually a consequence of this is the most gen, this is a general description. And then the first law is kind of a subset of the second law. Okay. Now this is the final thing here that I is very, very important. The third remember the just consider the third question that I asked. If you've got, I'm just going to redraw everything here. If you've got two objects, this is, let's change it, that's A and that's B. And they're interacting. And so these forces, that's FA on B. And that is FB on A. Okay. Yeah, that's a vector lines. I just drew it at an angle because of, of that other line. Okay, so they... They're interacting, and so they're equal, they're opposite. So if I have 10 minus 10, I get 0, okay? But now, why? how is it that any object can accelerate? Well, because you're confusing uh, these forces that are in interaction pairs with forces that are acting on a single body. So... If we just look at object B, or body B, yes, in this case, if this is our system, yes, those forces interact and cancel. So the forces inside the system have cancelled out. But B, if we just isolate B, draw a free body diagram, which we'll, if you don't know, we'll get into it at some point, probably in chapter 2. Then what are the forces acting on B? The only force acting on B is FAB. Okay? And so now, and this, this object B has a mass or an inertia. So now we can say, well, the vector sum acting on B is this guy, FAB, equal to mass acceleration of B. 
So don't get confused between two forces that are acting on different bodies. Okay? And this, where you've got a that single force acting on this body. And so it, in this specific case, you've got an unbalanced situation, an unbalanced force, and so you will have an acceleration. Okay. All right. Uh, hope you learned something.